ago, a judge in Texas banned the abortion pill nationwide for safety reasons. Because even though women have used it safely for over two decades, he's a man, and I guess he just knows better. <laughs> now, thank God the Supreme Court has temporarily halted that decision, at least until Clarence Thomas comes back from his all-expenses-paid cruise. <laughs> doesn't stop individual states from enacting their own bans, and over a dozen states already have, including Wyoming, which bans both Mifepristone and a second abortion pill, Misoprostol. But we, but we looked into it, and it turns out it's not a ban for everyone. You can still get Misoprostol in Wyoming as long as you're a dog, <laughs> or a cat, or a horse. Uh, because veterinarians in Wyoming can still prescribe the pill for animals, which means if you're a woman in Wyoming whose rights are being restricted, you might need to get creative. Good girl. I'm your mommy. I'm your mom. Hi. You must be Desi. Thank you so much for seeing me. Her. My girl. Waffles. Of course, and what can we do for Waffles today? Uh, Waffles was wondering if you could write a prescription for the abortion pill. Okay, uh, when did your dog become pregnant? <laughs> uh, um, I guess two weeks ago, apparently, thank you. Uh, it's just it's not really a great time for her. You know, she's really trying to focus on her career. Oh, I see. And what does she do for a living? She's a sled dog. She's a sled dog. She's a sled dog. Yeah, and she's also a, a bomb-sniffing dog. And as you know, pregnancy really messes with the olfactory organs. No, that's not a thing. But mostly she's a therapy dog, aren't you, Ruffles? I thought you said her name was Waffle. It's just so crazy that this would happen right now because she always uses protection. Oh, you mean she's... Fenced in? Oh, she's fenced in, all right. It's like Rikers down there. Jesus. Dogs are so expensive. Do you know how expensive dogs are? I do. I'm actually a veterinarian. There's dog food, there's doggy daycare, there's doggy taekwondo lessons, there's doggy diapers, and then there's doggy college, and that's just the first 18 years. Most dogs don't live that long, but... She already has two puppies at home, and they are sucking the life out of her, quite literally. And this is her decision. This is her decision. And that's why these pills exist. So please give her the pills, please and thank you. Did I say please? It's okay. She doesn't have to explain herself. We can prescribe abortion pills for your dog. That's my dog. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, it's so fun here. Could you prescribe an abortion pill? You know, for my dog? Yeah. What's your name? I mean, her name? What I want to get clear here today is what are the actual services of Planned Parenthood? Well, thank you, Leslie, for asking me that question, and thank you for sharing the, how important Planned Parenthood has been for you, because that has been the story for so many people in their lives. Planned Parenthood really represents reproductive freedom. We sell freedom and agency. Mm -hmm. It means that when you walk into a Planned Parenthood health center, you may be coming for birth control, STI testing, cervical cancer screenings, breast cancer screenings, gender affirming care. And yes, we proudly provide abortion because that is also part of health care. Mm -hmm. That is the work that we do. That's what we do. And on the other side of every single abortion, every choice that someone makes to, to not continue a pregnancy, we are also seeing the impact on miscarriage management. We're also seeing the impact on their wives, on their daughters, on their sisters, on their workers, on their coworkers. And so men, I, I would say, actually are showing up in a much stronger way. There's a lot of them out there freestyling because they still don't know how our bodies work, how our periods work, <laughs> how our pregnancies work. But there are a lot of men who are showing up, and I think it is really important to give them the, the energy to, to continue to do that. Yes. Yes. How, how do we how do we how do we combat that? Like the, the this thing about our rights and everything. How we keep how we keep these motherfuckers. 
out of pussy. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, I mean, we have to be clear that the Supreme Court made a decision, but the Supreme Court doesn't get the last word. We do. Yeah. Yes. We are going to need to fight state by state because they are coming for birth control. They are coming for IVF. They are coming. They're trying to, they're literally trying to bankrupt, bankrupt us in Texas, right? Planned Parenthood in Texas. They are trying everything they can to stop people from getting access to care. But what we have in, you know, people like you who are just, you know, passionate about freedom, passionate about justice, um, is an opportunity to really be a leader and a volunteer. Oh! Oh! Now, you know you shouldn't give me no damn bullhorn. I'm going to be out there on the streets going, hey, women, hey, women, are you leaking? Come to Planned Parenthood so we can do some peeking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, guys, come in quick so we can fix your dick. You know what I'm saying? And the terminology that they they use, um, it's it's like scare tactics, like you know, like like partial birth abortion and uh, the, uh, abortion doctors. Like no no one goes to college and go, you know, what you gonna be? I'm gonna be a cardiologist. What you doing? Ooh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna work with feet. What about you? Abortions. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> Just abortions. I mean, it, it's. There's no such thing as like an abortion doctor. They, used, doctors, to, they right? used to call them abortionists. Okay. So that's like really not a real <laughs> right. doctor. You don't right. want to go to an abortionist. Right. right. Um, abortion doctor is a demeaning term. Um, OBGYN is a good term. Um, providing care for women is a, is a good way to put it. Right. Um, and it's. It's all intended to make it seem as though abortion is not part of health care. And the, the very important thing that everybody has to think about is abortion is part of health care. Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm glad you're saying that to hear that young women are, uh, are active and they're voting because we need them. Because, uh, you know, the House Majority Leader, Steve Scalise, said that Roe's reversal, and, and this is a quote, he said, only the first phase in the battle. Now the next phase begins. Like, what is that next phase? What, you know, what, what do you think there that means? I think it means contraception, going after contraception. Um, that, you know, there are, there are uh, right-to-lifers who believe that the birth control pill is what they call a chemical abortion. Uh, they think the morning-after pill, is which you, can, which you take, to prevent a pregnancy is actually an abortion. They think the IUD is an abortion. It's like it's in there. It's performing abortions every day. Uh, <laughs> they 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 have their own they have their own facts, and I think that we're already seeing that contraception, which should be part of the, you know, if you're against abortion, you should be in favor of contraception because that will prevent. Right. Um, but. But we're already seeing moves to make contraception harder to get. So these, they, they have no idea how a woman's body works. That's they, so true. Science. That's I, I, I'm so yeah. true. There was recently a, a state legislator um, in a very red state of Idaho or Utah, I think, and he said, I raise cattle. I know all about what goes on. And I've walked behind cows. And I'm thinking, so you've looked up a cow's behind and you think you understand what happens with women. I mean, <laughs> how crazy is that? <laughs> oh, I know. That's I know. terrifying. It's terrifying. It is. It is. So, it's, and it's such a polarizing issue. Um, how, how do we change minds? How, how do we, you know, sway them? Or is, is it education? Or is it, is it like a personal experience? What, what is it? Well, I think it's all those things. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think personal experience, if people know someone who's had an abortion, they start to think differently. And there's actually a sociological study that shows this by a sociologist named Sarah Cowan, um, who found out that even very, very anti-abortion people if it's someone in their family, if it's a friend, they'll be kind um, a lot of the time. They might even drive that person to the clinic. 
um, even if they think it's the wrong thing to do, because they can relate on a human level to the difficult situations that women who have abortions are often in, involving poverty and abuse and health problems, all kinds of stuff, having other things that they really want to do in their life, like hold a job, go to college, all that. Um, so people are not as evil as they seem. <laughs> as they seem. <laughs> people are not as evil as they seem. That's my mantra. Uh, In America, and honestly everywhere, motherhood is treated as a woman's central purpose in life, as if our destiny is to let a tiny stranger rip a hole through our Pikachu from the inside out. <laughs> And then as soon as we turn 18, we're just supposed to sit back and wait for Nick Cannon to impregnate us? <laughs> and look, I have infinite respect for moms, but motherhood is hard. It's so hard, it even broke Marie Kondo. <laughs> Tidying up was her life's work. Then she has kids and was like, F it, living in squalor is fine. <laughs> shouldn't be surprising that some women aren't signing up. But many people aren't just surprised, they're horrified. Childless women are seen as unfulfilled, unhappy, even the Pope has slammed us, saying that not having children is selfish. First of all, I am not going to take procreation advice from a guy who's never even penetrated anyone. <laughs> Well, not that we know of, anyway. <laughs> and what's crazy is that for some reason, people feel entitled, entitled to tell you what a horrible person you are right to your face. When people ask me, do you have children, and I say no, they always look at me then and say, oh, I'm sorry. As if, like, there's something, like, physically wrong with me. I've had people break down in tears to me about the fact that me not having children is robbing them of something. I've gotten everything from you're selfish for not wanting children. Your childhood must have been terrible if you don't want to have children. Are you one of these career thirsty women that doesn't want children mm. and how could you deny your man uh, the chance to have children? I wow. wouldn't want to be with you. Yes, because men are so upset every time they're denied a chance to have a child. <laughs> Watch an episode of Maury Povich to see how excited men get to find out that they are the father. <laughs> and it's bad enough when people judge your life choices, but apparently childless women aren't just harming themselves, we're actually destroying society. You look at Kamala Harris, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. Maybe if you two weren't such boner killers, women would want to have more children. make the country miserable. I love this country. It's where all of my things are. <laughs> and I've got news for everyone. Instead of shaming childless women for what we're doing to the country, you should be thanking us. We are saving society. We are more likely to give our money to charity. We have a lower carbon footprint. We're the reason there are fewer screaming children on airplanes, in movie theaters, and restaurants. <laughs> Every baby we don't give birth to is one less baby that could grow up to be the next Elon Musk. The reason that I did that piece on Planned Parenthood, I'm 55 years old, but when I was coming up, um, there wasn't, you know, it's very strict about talking about sex to your children and stuff. And, you know, my mom got sick and my dad, my dad didn't want to talk to me about sex. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, just to let you know that there's a lot of girls out there that's like that, you know, that don't freaking know what's going on with their bodies or what's going on with sex. There's a lot of men out there that are becoming men and don't know about stuff. And that place provides that type of information. You would not know how much they saved my life. So much that I have them in my trust. That's how much I believe that that service <laughs> needs to be one of the most important things. You know, we already got our rights taken away. We, we can't get our health care taken away also. So all the men that's in here, yo, fight just as hard as the women, okay? Yeah.
You got sisters, you got aunts, you got... This is a real, real war, you guys. This is a real war. And I hate to say it, but and even if it's funny, but Handmaid's Tale literally started off with, they took our rights first. Yes. And then Congress took over that, like literally, yes. let's not sit here and watch some obvious shit happen. Let's